Why does that occur? Because you could have you could have literally done anything. Sure. Else. Sure. So why this and how this? So, so the why is you know hinting at or, or reminding you what I shared earlier about wanting to help people do the best version of themselves. And so we started the company to tell these stories and to shift narratives. Yeah. Um, and the how is kind of like even, you know, wills and wealth. You, you, you connected with people who had strengths in different parts of what is required to do this. Yeah. And you bring your talent as an interviewer, as a host, and it kind of comes together. I and want to the, pause there. So you think I'm talented as an interviewer course, and as a host? Okay, course. I just want to. Right. Yeah, I want to make sure we got that got part that on. on. The get that on the <laughs> um, and so for for me, for for Solidify, you know, I turned to my wife. She's my the, the company lawyer. Yeah. We talked. We identified. You married strong too. That we was married strong. Talk. Important. Important. Right. Harvard. Thought, look, Harvard educated attorney. You know, Harvard law. UEA yeah, undergrad. She's a beast. Uh, but she. But but one of the most kind, humble persons you ever want to meet. Um, but what happens is you find people who know how to do what you don't know how to do yet, uh. and you build a team that fills in the necessary elements for you to go where you're trying to go. Um, it's not that hard. And remember what I was talking about with these mirrors and windows. Once you have a healthy belief in who you are, and you get to the place where you think you can do anything you're willing to work on, then other people have created production companies. So I knew I could create one. And now I just needed a little assistance. So we went and got the number two from Spike Lee's 40 Acres and a Mule, Monty Ross. They set up a film company. So I was like, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Monty, what'd you do? He was teaching it in Virginia. So we had dinner. And he came on board. So how did that, how did you, did you just reach out? Did you know him prior a friend, to? A or? friend I went to high school with okay. knew he was in town. Relationships. And, and so the relationship. So he, he put together a dinner. A guy I worked with on a, on a project where we were the initial investors called Movie Pass, which actually just launched on Sunday um, to the nation. He said, I know this guy named Q and he's looking to come to Virginia. And I talked to Q. Q had understudied under Martin Scorsese and Joel oh. Schumacher who did Hunger, wow. Hunger Games. And he was like, okay, I'll come. So we put them up in Richmond, and they became the core team. Myself, Q, Monty, my wife, we, we hired a, a young guy, a millennial, to have you know, generations on the team, and um, brought Nick in. And before you know it, we had the, 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 the cornerstones and the mix to begin to deliver on the vision that we had. We didn't need a bunch of people. We needed the right people. And so when we got the right people, we put in that work, and then the magic started happening. So next thing you know, we get a call, hey, we've got this project, and it's got Tay Diggs, John Cusack, George Lopez, and Luke Hemsworth. Want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. And um, I got calls from friends. Hey, BK, we saw your movie in the theaters, and it had real actors in it. I'm like, well, that's kind of what happens when you make real movies. <laughs> But I understand because people don't expect that. Right. And so we turn a lot of the low expectations or whatever into part of our secret sauce. So they don't see us coming a lot of times. They think, oh, this guy, former communication executive, he making movies on a, on a phone or something like that. It's going to be a short. You know, they assume mm -hmm. that it's not on the scale that it actually is. But what I know and what you are learning and know what your team will learn and know is that guys like us come from a tradition of excellence. We were excellent before we got to this country, the whole time we've been in this country, and we will keep being excellent. We got uh, quad uh, duallys in quad the back. Quad duals, absolutely. Let's get them open. Uh, you want to get in? All right, go, go right ahead. Yeah, go right ahead. I, I want to take a look here at, um, at the interior. So we've got the Stingray. Uh-huh. Uh, steel plate there. Carbon fiber seats, carbon fiber and leather, beautiful uh, infotainment system. Yeah, I got and, the cockpit um, kind of style buttons right down uh, yes. be between the driver and the passenger. I see has that. this little well oh, on wow. the back to charge my phone. Okay. Um, has all the telematics in. Bose has system. Bose system, uh, heated and cool seats. I mean, so, so they didn't skimp on performance, they didn't skimp on luxury, they didn't skimp on style. And it's just, it's a lot to love. Gotcha. Awesome. All, all at a working man's price. 
<laughs> Where I come in is we've gotten really good, prolific, in fact, at talking about the tragedy of our experience. I'm trying to help us to also talk about the triumphs, too, because those triumphs become the blueprints. I didn't go and study the worst of our experiences to figure out my best life. I built my 60-year plan based on people who were excellent, who did the work, who helped people. And if it can work for me, it can work for somebody else. On a personal note, you willing to share that 60-year plan? Of course. Okay, great. I need to see it on, I got to see it. Right, <laughs> okay. So I got it. It's on one page. It's easy. Perfect. Yeah. That's even better. Yeah. Do you yeah. know it by heart? I do. You want to, are you willing to share some of that? I mean, I mean you've accomplished yeah, a, I mean, a ton. So, so basically, you, you take the, the three or four people, you lay out their common denominator. So for mine, it was, you know, college. A few of them had master's degrees. I ended up getting mine. All of them had law degrees, so I got mine. Then it was, you know, work at a company. Originally, I thought I was going to become a lawyer. I had, you know, go to a law firm. I end up at, corp at a corporation, so that's fine, firm, corporation, yeah. and then become senior partner, so that translate, translates into you move up to the C-suite yeah. in the corporate space. And then the last thing was create ri the Rising Sons and Daughters Foundation. So I own the URL, because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking forward. And then the, the last thing on my plan is to create this foundation that donates scholarships uh, two kids going to school anywhere in the world. And so we'll, we'll, we'll fund that and then run it um, until I'm done. And the thing, one thing you mentioned, you know, with a career and people get to, you know, whatever time they spent, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, and they stop and then enjoy the, the, the toys, or watching movies or what have you. One of the best pieces of advice I got was don't stop. Mm. That's when you die. 85-year-old wow. man, said, BK, my secret, and looked good, too. <laughs> Ir Irving Pedro, he was the first African-American to get a degree from Virginia Tech. I talked to him. And he worked for, like, Chiquita Banana or something like that, became a pretty respected executive in, in the corporate world. And I said, what's your secret? How you keep going? You said, you're looking good? He's like, I didn't stop. All my friends that died stopped. Wow. I keep going. I always got something to do. Man, dress nice, look good, kind. What, I, what, I, what I've come to believe is that you don't have to be a good person or, or a great executive. You can be both. A good person, great executive, a good husband, a good spouse, a person, a champion for your community. We're capable of all those things. In fact, it has been our legacy to be exemplars of that. One of my, for one of my early books, um, The Tale of the Tea, which won an, a, a National Nonfiction Book Award, is about the power of honest conversations to heal. And on the cover is a guy named George Grant. Now, George Grant invented the golf tee. Okay. Brother in 1801, got the mm. patent, hangs in my office. In addition, he was the first black professor at Harvard and a dentist. Mm. So we've always had these kind of multiple track capabilities, talents, but we just don't always hear about them. And so one of the things I love about even this show is that you're exposing people to more than just cars, more than just resources. You're exposing them to excellence and hopefully motivating them to pursue their goals with an with a enhanced kind of gusto and a belief that they can actually do it. Because what I find I run into the most with young people and they see a guy like me or my wife, they're like, how? What they're really saying is, I don't know if I can do it. We all go through doubts. It's, hum it's human. In fact, the biggest challenge most of us will ever face is the person in the mirror. It's the part of you that challenges you, 
and introduces the doubt. That's why when you hear people talk about even the enslavement of our ancestors as not being the worst thing that happened to them. The worst thing many argue and I tend to support is the mental impact of it where you question yourself and your own abilities. You know, I think it was Carter G. Woodson who said, if a person is unaccustomed to going into the front door, they will create a back door for their use. And we've got to get more accustomed to going through the front door or knocking the whole damn thing down and building what we need to build for our sustenance, for our increase, for our growth, for our development, for our communities. We used to do that. And I think we can bring that back. But if you don't believe you're a part of a success narrative, if you don't believe that you have the talent and are blessed with the capabilities to become whatever you are seeking, then whatever you believe is going to be true because that's what you're going to act on. So what we are trying to convey and share is a truth that sets everybody free. So we know the, uh, at least the right now goal long term for Solidify is to produce 70 films. We're at 20. Um, currently uh, mm -hmm. in production, or is it already done, uh, the uh, Kill Room? Kill Room is done and done in post-production. Uh, we'll release sometime in, Octo in August or September. Huge names, yeah. by the way, right? Yeah. Sam, Sam Samuel Jackson, Jackson Uma, Thurman. Uma Thurman, Joe Manganiello. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a fun film. It's like the art world meets the underworld. And you were approached for that, or you sourced that? I was approached that? for that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Incredible. So yeah. where, where do we see Solidify five years from now? Five years from now, we'll be uh, releasing films in 2,000, 3,000 theaters. Uh, we'll have an international play. Uh, Movie Pass will be over a million, two million subscribers. Um, the Mr. Business cartoon franchise will be up and operating based on some, my first 10 children's books. And um, Media U, our online film school, will have taught its million student huh. five years from now. What keeps you going? At what, this stage of the game, you're already wildly successful. What keeps your finger on the pulse? This what, is going to sound you going? odd, maybe. But what keeps me going is I feel like I'm just starting. Mm. I feel like I've learned all this stuff to now do what I'm supposed to do. In fact, I usually say I spent my first 50 years doing what I was trained to do. And now I get to spend the rest of my life doing what God made me to do. And that's to tell these stories. It's to inspire people, to lift. I'm really doing this for a reason. It's not for the money. There are much better ways to make money. I'm doing it because I've seen the impact that stories can have on people. And I know the impact that stories had on me. How much, <laughs> what, what does this stick on us? If you bought it, from the dealer, nicely configured, you're somewhere between 70 and 85, depending on which trim you get. Uh, LT1, 2, or 3, this is a 2. Gotcha. But with the Z51 package. Um, so it's pretty much everything in it. It's the first car I ever bought that appreciated when I drove it off the lot. So, you know, you, you get in it for somewhere between 70 and 85, and you drive off, you're somewhere between 125 and 150. For our future producers, uh, for our future authors, what are three key pieces of advice that you can give to them for those who want to break through and not just start a production company, right? It's a matter of paperwork, but really start yeah. a production company for those who want right. to author their first books and get it published. Yeah. What, what, what are three? And you don't need to wrap that up into six pieces, but just you know, share, share what you have. For a creative, get into your craft. If you're a writer, write. If you're a producer, 
start producing something, even if it's a short, even if it's small. Um, identify people in the field that can help you. Critically important to <clears throat> not go it alone, especially if you want to do it at scale. Yeah. And then probably the last thing is to be patient. It's a long game. And, you know, nobody gets nominated for Academy Awards or Tony's in their first outing. Every now and then it happens, but it's rare. Most people don't get nominated ever. Right. So it's a long tail. You've got two nominations. I've got two. In yeah. your first couple of years. Yeah. It's a long tail, but right. it's, it's, it's a short tail. <laughs> I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not that anybody else can't do it, yeah. but what you find is what separates the, the best from the rest is really the time they put into the project, the work. That's really, I mean, the difference, you know, uh, uh, the difference between an, an author who's published and one who's not is that the one who's not just isn't finished, hasn't written enough yet, you know? And so once I crossed, you know, got into, you know, 50 plus, I knew how to do a lot of stuff. So I'm not a 20-something writing yeah. with the relationships of a 20-something, with the knowledge of a 20-something. I'm a 50-something writing, producing, with the connections of a 50-something, gotcha. with the confidence of a 50-something. And so what I try to do is take the stuff that I've learned and help young people to, to get that confidence sooner. Because I could have had it sooner. I really could have been a beast 10 years ago. But ironically, be until I got the stories about Lewis Latimer and Granville T. Woods and Elijah McCoy, I had written myself out of the success narrative of humanity because I didn't know. Wow. So when people are talking about erasing our history and stuff like that, we should push back hard because it's critically important for our young people and all people to know who we really are. And um, so you've got to embrace that. But it is a long tail. And, you know, occasionally you do the work and that Image Award will show up, that Tony, that Oscar, that, that, that affirmation or validation of uh, work well done. So this is Wills and Wealth. And um, back to the Wills portion mm -hmm. of the conversation. I'm going to ask you a, a question that I don't believe I've ever asked a guest before, but it's, it's really, it's on my heart. Um, only because I recently, uh, I saw something where someone was talking about, you know, cars are not important and, you know, you don't need to buy cars. And you know, I get the space that they were coming from, but being the car enthusiast that I am, you know, I was a kid, with, my, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a household where my parents, they didn't keep a lot of money, but they made mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one of those Power Wheels trucks. And, you know, I loved cars from the time that I, I could remember. Mm -hmm. and, um, they're just important to me. And, okay. you know, being and having a history and coaching people and, and, and developing people, I've always been told, never tell people what to want. Find out what they want and just help them get it. Mm -hmm. And cars um, have always just played an important role in my life. I don't mm -hmm. see them all as depreciating assets because, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. there are many cars out there that are appreciating assets. Sure, sure. And they're not just the old ones, new mm -hmm. ones that are being, mm -hmm. you know, coming off the production mm -hmm. line from, from, amazing manufacturers. Mm -hmm. What role have uh, has vehicles, you know, cars, automobiles played in your life? Have they been important to you mm -hmm. at all? Mm -hmm. I know you're a car enthusiast, mm -hmm. so ha have, they, have they actually played an important role in your life? Or is mm -hmm. it like, ah, it's just a, another, you know, thing? A thing? <clears throat> well, it, it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm mixed on my response to that because I'm a person who appreciates the simple things in life. And so I woke up this morning. I am blessed. I have a beautiful bride. I'm doubly blessed. I got a great car to drive designed by my friend. Which is? I am extremely blessed. Which is outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. You are, let's, I just, we got to pause, on, not pause, but one of your close friends, uh, Ed Wilburn, is the, 
uh, former head of global design for General Motors and correct. actually designed uh, this uh, example, this latest example of the, yeah. uh, the yeah. Chevrolet Corvette. Sure, the elusive mid-engine Corvette, absolutely. And so for me, cars are tools or it, it's, they serve a purpose. They get me from A to B. They get me in a certain amount of comfort. Um, and so, I mean, you could have been driving a Honda Accord. It could, so, could mean, have been, not... and, I, and I hate on anybody who does drive right. one. Love, great car. And, and so, yes, and so, but for me, so, but just to answer your question, so they have a they have a value where they meet a need. Uh, but because of my engineering background and my architecture background, the scientist in me, the mechanics and the aerodynamics and all of that coming together in a way that gets you down the road in style, it does make me smile a little bit. I mean, who could not smile getting into that beast on a, whenever I choose? It's a wonderful thing. I mean, it's amazing to me. I can't go anywhere without people stopping me and asking me about this car. It's a beautiful color. And, and I've never seen it before. It's, it's Zeus bronze. Um, this car is probably the best car I've ever driven. I had some nice cars. So you beat me to, you beat me to one of my next questions, uh -huh. which, is it your favorite? It is my favorite. Yeah, yeah which it's is, my favorite. Okay. I've owned you know, Tesla, Aston Martin, Bentley, Range Rover. It beats them hands down because I'm also a person who's frugal. Okay. And so this... I gotta make, I got, I gotta make fun of you with that statement, though. Because okay. I, do, I do believe you're frugal. I, I, yeah. But you are on set today with uh, an Arlong and Zane on your wrist. That uh, <laughs> oh, this little thing. <laughs> if I'm guessing, in terms of being frugal, if I had to take yeah. a guess, yeah. right, it's probably somewhere between 120 and 150. Well, you, you got you're a good guesser. <laughs> <laughs> but at, but at the end, I knew I was gonna be here, but so yes. I wanted to. I'm being frugal. I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to embarrass nobody. You know, make my family back right. at home think I ain't I'm, know how to do. Got gotcha, you. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, but, but so you just decided to show up and embarrass everybody. Here. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is something you grow into. No, absolutely. And uh, I've been collecting for about 30 years. Wow. And so, you know, you don't start with the Zeit work. You start with, I, my first watch was a Casio G-Shock. Yeah. And then um, uh, my dad gave me a Timex at some point that I cherished because he, he gave it to me and his father had given it to him. Um, but my collection, I had someone I had about 100 watches. Wow. And probably 10 cars. And now I've reduced the fleet down to about four. Okay. And this one is absolutely my favorite. Once I knew I was going to get this, I was, it, it was comfortable getting rid of some of the other stuff. I mean, naturally aspirated V8. This is the, what's called the Z51 package with special brakes and um, I mean, zero to 60 in under three seconds has a, like a steel plate under the bottom. I mean, it's a race car, Yeah. but it's super comfortable. I can put it in touring mode or track mode or sports mode. And so we drove here from Virginia and it was like riding around in your living room. It was fantastic. Um, so the car, I guess, the, to complete the answer to your question, it's both for me. It is, it, it is, it is, a, it is a transport necessity and something that brings me joy because I know what went into creating this fantastic beast. I mean, that's 60 years in the making. Mm. It is no small feat to come up with an idea that is embraced and loved, then created. It's the first car I ever purchased that went up in value when I drove off the lot. Wow up in value, you know. I've got offers for twice what I paid for the car. It's not going, so this is a lifer for you, you keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I, the people I've been, uh, I've turned down several offers, uh, six figure offers to buy this car. And I told them, no. Top three cars that uh, you would like to own. Maybe like the same way I'm sure you have grill watches. Some of them I'm, I'm certain you've acquired. Uh, right? uh, top but... three cars, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I like the E-Ray version of this too, because it has the wide body, kind of like the Z06. Keeps some of the uh, features on this 
uh, C8, and this is stock. This is no changes. This is how it came. I drove it out of the showroom just like this. Okay. So I like, I like this, but the E-Ray probably, um, I've thought about the Tesla Roadster. Okay. Uh, didn't put a deposit on one, almost did, but I, I, I have the original uh, P85, the one that broke the Consumer Reports uh, registry, so that, that's the one I chose. And then um, I kind of fancied a Bugatti Chiron. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> All right, I, I let you have the Tesla, you know, it's a great, sounds good. <laughs> I just saw one for the first time uh -huh. uh, in person uh -huh. uh, a few weeks ago. A friend of mine, one of my closest friends, he was, um, we took a drive to Virginia, actually, okay. um, a state that I told your wife, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of driving through, right? Uh -oh. Most state troopers are, are wild out there. But um, we went to the Rolls Royce dealership there. Okay. I think it's called uh, Rolls Royce Washington. It's, very, it's owned uh, by a yeah, friend. Near DC. Okay, great. So I'll know that. Next time I go, right? We'll see how good, good of friends you know, we all are. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but they had a uh, $4.6 million uh, Bugatti Chiron in the showroom. Okay. And I was just floored. It is... He'll sell it to you. Mr. Moorhead, he's a good brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet, right? Okay. Maybe by right. season five. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm being frugal. Understand. Good, there you go. <laughs> but absolutely uh, incredible, incredible vehicle. Okay, any closing thoughts for us today, BK? Sure. Um, I hope people are touched by what we're talking about. The win is in the work. And anybody seeking to have a better life, their best life, can do it as long as they put in the work. In fact, our greatest achievements lie on the other side of our fears. And so my prayer for your, you, the team, and the audience, anybody viewing this, is that they should love themselves enough to give their dreams a chance. So when it started breaking all the records, winning on tracks, now everybody seems wants one. Then the Z06 generation came out. Now the E-Ray versions come out. Awesome. And so it's just been a continuous round of hits for General Motors. So is the complete body fiberglass or is any part of it, uh, you know, the body itself painted carbon fiber or anything like that? Uh, I'm not certain, but I know somebody who does know. Okay. And it's the guy who designed this car, the one and only Ed Welburn. As a matter of fact, here's Ed. 